Okay, Chaos D1, going with Freya, which is uh, kind of his standard thing, his go-to. That's his, that's his go-to. I mean, he's not very good with her. I think he only picks her because it's, you know, the closest thing he gets to a naked woman every day, but, you know. Well, I mean, he is married, isn't he? I mean, unless she's just, like, smacks him around every day, but that would be rude. That's what I figure happens. John doesn't seem like that kind of guy who'd, you know... Sleep with women? Have... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this commentary match already. <laughs> but no, it is going to be Ole versus Freya. So we're going to get a Marksman versus a Burst Mage. Now, Freya is ridiculously good in Assault uh, 1v1 Joust because her alt is an all-purpose, I can get away out of all your bullshit, and at the same time, kill you button. Yeah, and her 2 is a great lane clearer. Uh, which does a lot of damage, especially if the, uh, he builds her the way he normally does, which he usually goes Fatalis and uh, Demonic Grip, I believe, uh, to get attack speed. Yeah, he does. He goes with that quick attack speed burst to get as many attacks out of that pulse as possible. Now, the big thing, though, Ola has that big two-second stun if he decides to max that axe first as three. With that, he may have enough time to actually kill Freya in one burst with that because Ola does become ridiculously powerful in late game. The big thing, though, is that could easily be outdone with beads. But John, being that he's shitty, never picks up beads and never gets out of that sort of stuff. So I'm going to look to see if that gets taken advantage of. And as noted, he has been drinking, which means it is entirely possible that shitty decisions are abound. I'm expecting them, really. But who knows? I mean, he is entranced by the rainbow tits of Freya, so he does have a chance that he will just become a worshipper himself and just destroy Uller, but that is yet to be seen. Are we even positive that's how to spell the name Uller? How, 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 do, you, how do you pronounce it? Uller? Uller? I'm not even sure that's the god's real name. I just think the people at high res just someone had to throw up and they heard the noise. Like that! That right there, that's his name. Like some dude just fell asleep on his keyboard when he woke up. He was just like, oh shit, I should get rid of those semicolons. Or, that sounds about right. Uh, that, isn't, that is entirely possible. Um, Gingerbeard has gone on to say that uh, he, he's fairly new to the game, but having played with him, he's not entirely bad. Uh, he's actually very good. Um, does have a tendency to ignore actives, but he says he's trying to get better at it. So it uh, will be interesting if he uses any actives to his uh, own good, like meditation or maybe Fist of the Gods for stun. Very much so. Gingerbeard has been a vastly improving player. I think I saw one of his first matches when he was on the first uh, Conquest match. He was excellent. Uh, he's been excellent since then. So I'm looking forward to seeing his growth. It's like a, a new up-and-comer in the world. All right, we are in the match, and then just go and sync up on the top left hand there. Do you see the button I was referring to? Yep, I got it. Cool. So yeah, uh, WSAD moves, E gets you up, W cuts out all that superfluous stuff, and if you hold down shift while you move, you move a lot faster. What cuts out the superfluous stuff? You. Oh, there we go. Yep. What goes down? Like, E goes up, what goes down? Uh, Q. Gotcha. All right, we are seeing them come out. John is going to be going with that double, uh, that level two of Fatalis, immediately going just right out of the gate for it. Meanwhile, Gingerbeard's playing it a bit more cautious, going with Death Toll to get that extra health and everything like that, and a pair of boots and some pots. Yeah, standard basic build. Uh, Chaos is going for that attack speed early, clearly. It's helpful. It does let him get those extra little bursts out of that pulse while it's still active, so I can completely understand it. It's going to help him push, and that's the big advantage a mage has against the hunter early on, is that their push is a lot more powerful. Chaos kind of running back between the Phoenix and, uh, and the Titan right now. I'm not sure what he's doing. Maybe forgotten something. That, well, I think this is the after effect of being so drunk you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So I think this is just chaos being pants on head dumb. 
Uh, I will give you that. That is entirely possible. It may also be a shameless attempt on John's part to check out Freya's ass as her loincloth moves from side to side while she runs, so that's what I'm going to be going with. Looks like Gingerbeard's going to be going for the mana camp. Not sure. This is going to be a bit hard for him. He doesn't have a, a fist, and he does not have anything to really recover health from this, so he's going to be a little bit lower once he gets to camp. But this is big because Or has just a terrible problem with mana management early in the game. Yes, he does. So getting that is huge for him, but I would recommend going back and not going straight into lane, which he appears to not be doing, which means D1 is pushing the lane. Using that it too is. to get that first. It seems they're working out. I mean, he's able to get the lane pushed back out now, and he actually has a level advantage because of the fact that he was able to get that jungle camp XP before the match really started. So it's a little bit of an advantage for him right now. And now we see John's already backed up to his tower. Perhaps we were seeing just the extent of John's crappy abilities. Looked like a fight was about to initiate, but it didn't really... Nope, Gingerbeard's trying to make a fight happen underneath tower, which is not a smart move. Chaos is now level 5, he does have that ult available to him, and that is a dangerous place to be with Freya. Looks like he'll probably be going for it. Oh no. Heck. I think had Orr not ran away during that, he was probably going to use his pulses, get Orr as low as possible, then fly up into the air with the ult and try to pick up a kill. But unfortunately, Orr has that escape, so John had to re retreat. And now without mana, he's heading back, picking up his full-on Fade Talus, and then going to try to head back in the lane. Yep, at uh, level 6, he still has that le uh, level advantage. But he's not very... Uh, he doesn't have enough mana left, I would suspect. Oh no, he's still got mana pots, so he should be good Your for now as uh, D1 goes attack. over to the mana camp. He's doing very well because of Freya's innate magical uh, uh, lifesteal. She's actually able to handle that camp extremely well. And now she's going around to the side. I don't know if she was maybe trying to go for a sneak attack there or just didn't want to be seen in sight. Oh, Ginger Bear has no mana here. D1 coming in for the gank. Uh, he will not be able to get that. Yeah, D1, the, the problem with starting with Fatalis right off the bat is that he doesn't get any ma extra magical power off of that. So his attacks right now, though he can get a lot of them out, they just don't have the punch right now that was able to take out Or. Yes, but he is going for boots next. It'll be interesting to see if he goes for the uh, focus boots uh, for the uh, cooldown or the other ones that I can never... But... Magi, I believe. I, I'm... Uh... I feel fairly confident John's going to go with the focus. He seems to be pretty high on uh, prioritizing cooldown. As he should. Freya with cooldown is a frightening thing. She, it, With full cooldown, she could basically keep her, uh, her basic attack power up on pretty much entirely. It's almost like a toggle at that point. Okay, looks like D1's going to be pushing that tower, but Gingerbeard is coming back into lane. And Gingerbeard actually picked up the uh, Warrior's Tabby, so going with that little extra penetration instead of cooldown reduction with War, not a bad idea since his abilities lower his cooldowns as they are. And minions are flashing right in the middle once again, so no real push being made between those. Oh, Gingerbeard with a very nice shot in there with Ulyar's one, managed to catch him. Didn't get him with the two, or with the three rather, but he did manage to take a large bit out of John's health. Honestly, at this point, you should be pressing the advantage right now. John does not have his ult. Now it's back, but at that moment, he didn't have it, so then would be the moment you want to try to take advantage of it. 
Yeah. Um, Gingerbeard's still down on mana completely. If D1 wanted to charge in, he might have a chance. Actually, no, he doesn't really have any chance without the extra attack yet. But once he gets built up enough, Gingerbeard might have a big problem. Well, Freya is a big late game stomper, but there he goes with that stun. Now she's chopping her to pieces. And Freya's oh, gonna take Freya. this guys to get away. Just enough of that ult to scare him away. But D1 charging back in for that extra minion damage. And Very fucking nice from Gingerbeard. Gingerbeard smacks down D1, who made a greedy mistake going for those minions Your and instead of porting attack. back and he took shit yeah order has so much range with that one between his one and his three and his bow form he can deal a lot of damage from a deceptively far uh distance away he managed to take that to full advantage just shot right through the minions caught him with just enough damage to take him down that penetration is definitely paying a fact uh apart from and now Gingerbeard has a one level advantage on D1, but this might be a bad idea. This is greedy. That was sadly very greedy on Gingerbeard's part to try to go for a kill underneath tower when he was already low. It was indeed. Uh, as soon as you hit a god, that tower focuses you, and he found that out the hard way. Very interestingly, is Gingerbeard is going for the Heartseeker. Now, Heartseeker can be a ridiculously powerful item. It can give you the single most attack damage you're going to get out of any one single item, but you need to get full stacks for that, and you can't die or else you lose half of those stacks. So this could uh, this could either be a great item or it's going to be a little bit of a waste of an item for him, depending on how well he plays. Yeah, if he wanted to go the safer route, he might have wanted to go Devourer's Gauntlets, um, because I don't believe you those stacks if you die but heart seeker as you said uh if you die while you're gaining those stacks half of them disappear which is yeah as you said it could be good it could be a bad pick it's going to hopefully work out in his favor because there isn't any contestion for minions you know this is a joust match so any minions that go into lame it's basically between him or if his own minions manage to kill it or a tower so he should be able to pull up stacks that way but freya because of that high burst damage can be a very difficult opponent to gauge whether or not you're going to be able to survive an encounter against Interest also that he's picked up purification beads. Now, I don't know if that's going to have a huge impact. Uh, Freya doesn't have a whole lot of crowd control in her kit outside of that banish. Yeah, and does does cool, uh, does cool those beads actually pull him out of the banish? Yes, uh, the beads will protect you from all crowd control, so it should pull him out of the banish once that happens. D1 once again. Going for that burst damage on the minions, hoping to catch Gingerbeard, which he did a couple of times. Gingerbeard needs to be cautious. He's very low and D1 does not have a whole lot of harass done to him. He does not have a reason to run away while his John has every opportunity to take the fight to him. Unfortunately, D1 seems to be completely out of mana, unless he wanted to use meditation, but he seems to be backing. Well, he actually did not pick up meditation. John has like an absolute aversion to all uh, active skills, so he's going to have to head back and it looks like he's probably going to start building towards the... Uh, I think it's Demonic Grip is the one. Actually, he sold it, so I don't know what he's planning to build now. But there it is, the Warlock Sash. And we will pretend that I wasn't looking at the wrong side when I mentioned it. <laughs> it's fucking John's fault. It's all his fault. And we'll probably will go back to base here and uh, go pick up some items. Hopefully he can pick up some life still because right now his biggest problem is that he gets harassed a little bit in lane and then he just gets behind. It's hard for him to really initiate. Uh, but surprisingly he's going with the height of the urchin. Now that is a very powerful item that gives you very good uh, stats for both magical and physical protection, but that requires you to get stacks. And in a game like Joust where assists are not gonna happen, that's gonna be difficult to really get going. Yeah, it's a very interesting choice, uh, especially if you wanted the defense. Uh, you really want it more t towards something purely magical instead of half and half. Exactly. And that because of that time spent there, Freya was able to get that tower down. Now he's lost his defense. Freya is just pressuring down on him, and she has it to the sky still. He will not, Won't be able to get the kill. will not get Gingerbeard as Gingerbeard goes back to his fountain to probably restore health. 
Settling for failure is something Jones pretty accustomed to. Ginger Beard looks to be chasing down D1, maybe hoping for that stun. With the banish. Oh, misses with the axe, and that was the big advantage he needs to hit with. He needs to be able to hit with that axe to get basically two seconds free of uh, full damage for him. That burst damage, that is that is the best part about that move. The fact that it hits other minions at the same time, plus you have the chance to hit a god if you're close enough to the minion you hit. And so you don't really need to be absolutely perfect with the hit. Again, he goes for the axe and misses with it. He's going to have to retreat at this point. He cannot survive an encounter against Freya, especially if her ult comes back up. But D1 seems to be low on mana, especially if he keeps using that burst. I would be surprised if he had maybe one ult out of him left. I don't think he had enough mana for that ult, but I don't think it meant... Oh, just barely getting out of there, Jin. Yes, Gingerbeard is running a dangerous game right now. Uh, let's see if he's got anything to pick up right now. I'm hoping for something with lifesteal. That's really what he needs right now if he wants to fight against this Freya, because otherwise he just gets chunked down and he can't land those skill shots to stay in the fight. Well, he's going to pick up a full level of meditation, and he's going to pick up the Morning Star, which can lead into a couple different items. The Heart Seeker is one of them. I forget the other two off the top of my head. I think it's the Winged Blade or something else. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head either. It don't really, uh, I think it leads into the Trident. The Trident and maybe Transcendence, I think, might be the other two. So I'll be interested to see what he's going with there. Transcendence might not be bad, though. At this point in the game, you're not going to be getting the stacks off of that. You probably need to. But, to note, uh, while Gingerbeard has been playing a dangerous game, he has not died since he got that Heartseeker. No, he has not, so that is working out in his favor. Your middle phoenix is under attack. Again, Again he misses with axe. This could be a very deadly hit right here. That Fatalis and that enables Freya to move even faster. One ult, there it goes. That's all she needed. And you notice here, I, I, you can see the better itemization from John. He knows he wanted to get that max cooldown cap, so he picks up the Breastplate of Valor, gives him that huge burst of physical protection, a huge pool of mana, and that 25%. Whereas you compare it to, to the height of the Urchin from Gingerbeard, which hasn't paid any dividends at all. I don't think he's gotten a single kill since he's gotten that item. So those protections right now are just still capped at 45, which is not really worth the money you're going to be investing in that item. Not only that, but again, he just died, so his Heart Seeker just lost half of its stacks. Yeah, and that's a big loss. And he's also now, it looks like he's choosing to max out his uh, Purification Beach, which would be fine again, but Freya just does not really have the crowd control to which that makes a huge difference. Uh, against that ult, you really want to have something more like the Aegis to give you that uh, invulnerability while she's you. you. Man. Benefits of the Fatalis, we're seeing it right now, able to chase down while still hitting those attacks and removing the debuff of attacking every time you hit. And yeah, he's taken to the skies. I don't know if he's going to have enough for that with that shot, but he might be able to, with a pulse, catch him here. Oh, Gingerbeard just barely able to get away. He pops that meditation to give him a little extra health and then just manages to scoot out of there before Chaos would take him down. And now Chaos is going to go back to pushing the lane. We're seeing a strangely impressive game out of our resident drum. I, you know, I hear that some people, you know, when they get drunk, they head into a better zone. So maybe John's just always pathetic and weak when he's sober, and uh, he just needs to constantly be drunk all the time. You're charging he's into like a hot, 
I, I consider John to be somewhat of a high functioning alcoholic. E1 just charging Ginger Beard down. It finally hits that axe, but unfortunately was not able to capitalize on it. The two disguises is probably going to be enough to take him down. E1 very nice with that. That Fatalis is a game changer if you can hit your attacks right. And D1 seems to be able to do this because, again, that Fatalis, it removes the movement debuff for attacking if you hit. Which means you're able to completely chase people down while using a axe, which otherwise wouldn't be possible. Yes, so that has been a big pickup on him, and he's managed to get that attack power now. He's probably just about, if not maxed, his stacks on the, that Warlock Sash. He's got a good amount of magical power on his, uh, on the, at hand right now for him. And he is taking down, he's attacking the Phoenix. Not going to be able to take it down, unfortunately, because the minions are all gone. But he's definitely got the big advantage at the moment. Interesting to see what uh, D1 is going for. He might be going for that attack buff if it's there. And he is. Well, Gingerbeard goes into lane. So yes. Now, is he going to notice that Freya is to his side? Uh, Freya is actually going to retreat. She's going to pick up that full obsidian shard now. He's going to have a little bit of money left over. Maybe go pick up a rod at Tahuti. Yep, that looks like uh, the direction John's going to be going with. Picking up the restored artifacts. So right now, Freya's burst is going to be insane. A single one of her pulse uh, irradiate or irritate, whatever the name of that move is. One of those combos right now could probably just about chunk Gingerbeard of all of his health. As Freya comes back in, Gingerbeard immediately retreats, which is a wise move. Not perhaps going back that far. And John's really pulling to having that level advantage now. Got a two, a solid two level advantage over Gingerbeard. And Gingerbeard now, uh, actually rather, John, I know, has picked up his first uh, level of purification beads. It may just be that he doesn't have money left or anything else, but if he gets hit with that, as you saw right there, got hit with the ax, used the beads to get out of him, is immediately going on to the offensive. And that's going to be over for Gingerbeard. He's got a full wave of minions right here. That should be enough to take the Phoenix. And he may even be able to make a little bit of a Titan push with this. Yeah, I would suspect so. Gingerbeard well, he's actually choosing the, He's choosing to prioritize the minions first. So he should be able to still get the Phoenix. But I don't know if he's going to be able to get too much more than that. But you are right, Gingerbeard's still down. He's down for another 17 seconds, so I wouldn't be shocked if John just activates his powers and just tries to chunk down the, the Titan just a little bit anyway. Like, as you're seeing right there, and the minions are right behind him. Gingerbeard is up, but at a three-level disadvantage. Isn't it awful when the villains win? I, I just hate it. Yeah, it really is. Oh, Gingerbread's actually got ahead of D1. He's, he's separating him from that. Unfortunately, he's going to be taking up all that minion aggro as well. Oh, all that damage from the fire creeps. He is unfortunately done. Oh, oh and late on to activate his purification beat. So he did get caught in that exorcism and then uh, heads down afterwards. And this is going to do it. Chaos is going to pick up the win here. Congratulations. Order side finally goes down for the first time in this tournament. Also, John eats bookers. It's true, he does. And, and kicks kittens. So there was that. It was a very interesting start at first. But uh, once Chaos D1 finally got his build and he got that attack speed, it really just kind of shoehorned out of control. And Freya just immediately went into control. I give props to uh, Gingerbeard for playing a good old... Uh, I think his problem, maybe he went with a little too many items that required stacks for it. But other than that, I, I definitely think he played a very good game. So uh, good luck to both of them. Absolutely. And now to jump back into the 